because I think they're separate, you know, and the body is, and the ego, our body and the soul are just completely in sync, you know, but, uh, but they're not the same, you know, uh, but the, the self, the, that organizing archetype of wholeness has to do with, with the organization of the body, you know, and, uh, so when the soul leaves the body, it um, takes what it leaves, uh, takes what it gained from the body with it. You know, there's an I, uh, uh, you know, some people who've had near death experiences say that the uh, er everyone gathers around the person who just died, so they can experience. Uh, life again you know the the warmth of, of human life they could just feel it in the newly the person who's just came that th this was actually a, another one said that uh that everyone was very busy as if they were on errands and couldn't carry long and uh yet they all had this had a secret joke that seemed to have a a, a secret joke and they were full of mirth you know uh young young said too that uh he he would look up he was looking up somebody who had died a long time ago and uh they were there you know several maybe a couple hundred years ago but they were just like sleeping on a and in other words they um somehow after a certain i mean we heard heard a little bit about this gary from uh, Patrick, mm. you know, uh, you know about what happens to someone who's been dead a long, long time. You know, but anyway, it was pretty interesting because I I had this dream that this, uh, uh, you know, all all our uh, contents in the general ledger were um, all added up to zero, and I couldn't figure that out. And she says that's because. You don't work on your dreams hard enough. I, I you all your contents so far to me add up to zero. At least you know for yourself as, as concerned. Well, does anybody have any dreams? Charles is here. Charles, by the way, I didn't call you. I was I'm going to call Charles today, but I my phone wasn't working, so I got a new phone, and now I can call anybody. My other phone just mm. conked out on me. What'd you so, get? Well, it's just, uh, uh, you know, they had a special on Verizon at, uh, uh, you know, iPhones. That's my, my uh, what do they call that cover thing? Or, you know, I always have that. I love that. Uh, uh, you know, th th this is a picture of Young. And, you know, Joseph Henderson said, uh, that every once in a while, he would look through his eyes, glasses, like down here, you know, and he'd be staring at something off in the distance. And you knew at that point that he was, uh, uh, you, you know, seeing something you didn't see. I don't know. Here it is. Uh, again. I don't know if you can see it, but, you know, uh, it's just he's seeing something that we don't see. And that, that's a little better if I could, you know, he just, uh, uh, but he would do that every once in a while. Then you knew that he was, he was actually, um, you know, sometimes when you're trying to think of something and you look up in the air, he would just kind of do that. But anyway, uh, who has a dream tonight? If not, if, uh, Charles, do you have one or Dawn or? Cat or Gary or Roy? Oh, Roy, did you send me a dream? No, I I, I did okay. a dream last week. So okay. I guess it's a bunch of people ahead of me. Yeah, all right. Well, sure. There. Tim, he's got one, I think. Yeah. I don't know if he's going to yeah, show if up. Tim, if Tim shows up. I, um, um, I'm just letting everybody know that I am going to be unable to talk for the most of this meeting because uh, I have to drive a work vehicle all the way back to work and then back home. Oh, all right, great. Poor logistical planning. So, okay, yeah, so well, that's fine. 
Well, let me, um, okay, so I, Kat, do you have a dream? You, I know you've got dreams. Um, I have got one if no one else wants yeah, to. Yeah, sure, let's go, let's right. go with it, because, uh, I mean, and, I have um, dreams too, but, um, you know, I'd rather work on your dreams than mine, but. <laughs> okay, um, I call this the manifesting boss and my turning people into stone power. Okay. All right. Great. Uh, okay. Let's, let me let a, a zine in here. And now let's go. It's the manifesting uh, stone boss. people or manifesting boss. And my turning people in um, turning people into stone power. Okay. All right. Now, hi, Azine. We're just getting started on this. Hi, Azine. Yeah, it is. Uh, the manifesting boss and the turning people into stone power. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, go, go right ahead. Okay. I'm in a caravan park, which is, I suppose, like a trailer park, but holiday type of thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm surrounded with lots of greenery, lots of trees, lots of benches. There's a cookout. And I see this particular manifesting coach and her family. And I go to my caravan and I find that her little girl, who is in the dream, is the age of three, climbing up the steps to get to me. Now, this particular coach actually in waking life does not have a little girl. But I pick her up and I take her back to this lady the coach and I keep doing it a number of times and then the coach says to me you know I don't mind that my little girl finds you and that she wants to be with you you know I, I don't mind that at all and then each time I take the little girl back to this coach it's kind of like me and the coach and her family are becoming closer sort of friends, if you see what I mean. And then the last time she says, I really don't mind my little girl follows you and, you know, she seems to have a relationship with you, but do not try to manifest me. And I say, no, of course not. And it was all cool. It was all fine. However, the scene changes and I go into a shop and there's lots of well-dressed men and women. However, and they, they, their type of dress was, I'd say, very flamboyant sort of 1900s. They're very sort of bohemian types, they're like intellectuals or artists or whatever. However, they were all witches. And I had no idea why I was there. And then some people arrive. And then all of a sudden, I'm caught up in some kind of initiation. And they've got these, these people circling me and this other girl. And then water seems to come from the ceiling, which one witch, a male witch, had invoked. And supposedly our gifts were revealed but I didn't know mine and one of them said well you best find out before he comes and I was like who what you know whatever then we're sitting at a table and having tea and someone says something to me and I turn around and answer them back and I'm a bit angry um but she was like, well, I, I don't want to talk about this anymore. I don't want to hear this. But she sort of turned her head away from me. But there was something in what she was saying triggered anger in me. But it wasn't a case of deliberately trying to hurt me to um, make me angry. It was almost like trying to evoke something from me. And when that happened, I had immediately a flash which was like in the dream, a repressed memory 
where I see a whole load of people around me and I stare at them and they seem to turn grey and become like stone. And yeah. then these gold tears weep from their eyes. And that was the end of the dream. That is uh, fabulous. Well, uh, let me go uh, through it again, uh, just to... Um... Yeah, a, a quick check. Would you have that typed up by any chance, Cat, where you could put it in the chat? I, I, I actually haven't. I, I mean, I could put it in the chat, but it was going to take, like, ages. No, no that's, that's fine. Well, I have got your... Uh, I mean, what I do normally is I just transcribe it. But let me go through it one more time. Uh, so we get it because it is, uh, um, uh, yeah, Dawn's got questions already, but I just want to go through it. And so we got, I got it straight. Okay. Uh, it's now, uh, it's the manifesting boss or coach. Yes, yeah, but she's a boss, but she's a coach, but the dream title is she manifesting boss because she's actually. All right. Now, what do you mean by manifesting? She teaches people on YouTube how to use your mind to get whatever it is that you want or whatever. Okay, now what is uh, exactly does that mean? Does that mean, is it magic or it's just uh, uh, the power of positive thinking? I would say the power of positive thinking. Okay, all right. So it's just like if you want, uh, it's goal setting or something. Yeah. You set a goal and you work towards it. Okay, so now, she, and the turnings people in the stone power. So, so there's two aspects into the stream, uh, two scenes or two, actually mm -hmm. maybe three, you know, and uh, uh, they uh, all, um, we have to remember that one follows the other and there's a mysterious reason for it. Okay, so let's just go through the first. Now you're in a caravan or it's a, it is a, um, caravan is a trailer, yeah. you know, and it, it is, but it isn't a, a permanent trailer park. It is a place where people vacation. Yeah. So is it a, at a park or in the city or? No, it's in the actual park. You've got like. Yeah, in a park. Like in woodlands and things like yeah, that. Yeah, woodlands. Okay. And uh, um, it's, uh, uh, there's greenery, there's trees, there's benches, and there's people doing cookouts. Mm hmm Okay. And then there is this, uh, this uh, really, I would say it's a, another word for it. I probably is a motivation coach, someone who's just yeah. a motivator. And so now you go to your uh, caravan or trailer and this, uh, uh, a, a, some kind of a, um, the, the outgrowth of the, uh, the feminine uh, development in this uh, woman who um, I don't know if she would be uh, you know often I've seen in so many dreams everybody has now that this this same sex person is not necessarily the shadow it can be a helpful companion but let's go through and see what it is because they don't this one does not until the end does not really seem too oppositional. But let's let's look at it this way, okay. Let's take it as the shadow. Uh, the shadow is this motivating coach. Now, let, let me just say, you as a very, a, a motivational coach is someone who's be, trying to be very practical and, and accomplish things in the outer world. This would be for personalistic, uh, uh, fame or fortune, you know, whatever, you know, uh, uh, is it, is it, is it oriented towards, um, uh, just probably anything, but, you know, usually these people are, uh, people who want to get rich or something, you know, I'm not yeah, sure. Is that, yeah. That she'd want that. Yeah. I could see that. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, anyway, it's fairly practically oriented. So this practically oriented person keeps having this three-year-old, uh, not not uh, uh, with uh, 
of her own volition, the three-year-old, of her own volition, she keeps coming to you, you bring her back. She comes to you, you bring her back. And then she says, she does this several times. And then um, this uh, uh, motivational coach says, I don't mind her being with you. And uh, uh, so anyway, these back and forth, back and forth, you get closer and closer to her. And, um, but the last time she says, I really, really don't mind. But don't you try to motivate me. Now, now explain that. Well, I mean, what she's, what it is, is that in the sort of, I, I suppose you'd call it law of attraction or whatever community, you can have what you want, everything else and blah, blah, blah. And then there is these, these other part of it is that a, a lot of people go into it to attract another person. They, they want a specific person. That's what it's called. So if you like, say you're like you're married craig right so they these people tell somebody that could be attracted to you right well you can have him you, you can have craig just doesn't matter that he's married you, you know that doesn't matter you you can just imagine it and whatever i don't really side with that kind of thing but that's <laughs> that's what I took it to, to mean personally. Okay, okay so so she, um, no, no uh, sh so let me ask you this. Is she saying uh, that even though you're becoming closer to her and her family, and she doesn't mind the three-year-old being with you, um, somehow... Uh, she's putting a fence around herself that you're not to penetrate. Yeah. Really. No. Yeah, that's what it is in the dream. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now could you describe uh, what you think her, is she a powerful person? Is she someone who is uh, someone who is a little uh, dangerous or, or what would you say about it? Why would she want to put a fence around herself? Well, the thing is, I mean, she is a very powerful person, I, I believe. But then there is a thing of also boundaries. Because um, as I said, there are some aspects to whatever you want to call it, law of attraction, whatever, which I would personally find uncomfortable but myself and um as i say like you craig or whatever you're married but I, I don't think it's particularly and then this is me being moralistic or whatever but i, I would i would feel uncomfortable telling other people well just go and get what you want well he's good does, doesn't matter just go for it do you see what i mean there is that aspect of it that i don't find um particularly um, comfortable with. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, okay. All right, well, I think um, let's let's leave that for a second. And uh, let's start go in just a second. And yeah, Don go ahead, Gary. This, yeah, Don brought this up too, because I don't think she said, do not try to motivate me. I thought it was, do not try to manifest me. Yeah, what does that mean exactly? Now, I'm, I'm using- Is this that one. right? Cat, that it was do not try to manifest me or was she, do not try yeah. to motivate me. She did say, don't try to manifest me. And uh, how, uh, now manifest does not mean the same as motivate. Is that right? Well, well there is some aspect little... to that, though. That's the thing. Yeah. There is some aspect to that. So, yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, let's see. British. Uh, manifest. Uh, well, let me go into the second uh, part of it. Uh, maybe, Gary, could you look up what the British uh, meaning of manifest is that's related to motivation or something? 
um, so we can maybe get a definition definition of it. Okay. Now, so anyway, then you go into a sh uh, uh, some shop, and there's a lot of well dressed people, very flamboyant, very bohemian. So you know, I'm kind of thinking of the flaneur, you know, just as this person who just goes to coffee shops and talks about uh, philosophy and literature and art all day. Is it is something like that or? Well, that's how I took it, because to be honest with you, I couldn't really see what they were selling, but it was a shop of some sort. But they were, it was all like marble. It was all like sort of 1900s type of decor and everything else. And the dress too. Yeah, but yeah. they were they would be the type of you know you get society mm -hmm. and high society, but they would be high society, but sort of a bit more deviant, it, or you know have yeah. a bit more flamboyant dress or whatever. Yeah, I mean, I, I would I would say it would be something like um, I don't know, you know, in the fifties here we had the beatniks you know, who would, uh, uh, you know, wear t turtleneck sweaters and, uh, you know, little berets and, uh, you know, sunglasses, have a little uh, patch of, of beard on their chin, you know, and they, you know, after some, after when a poet got done reading his poetry, they wouldn't clap, they just clicked their fingers like that, you know, and, <laughs> It, it, you, you know, it was, a, it, was a, it was right before folk music started. I mean, it was about, or coincidental with it, you know, but it was, it, and, and with Elvis Presley, but, you know, it was, it was sort of um, uh, with um, bebop and, you know, modern jazz at that point too. And, and, and sort of the, the 19, uh, the, the modern art of Andy Warhol, Miles Davis, uh, you know, uh, Jackson Pollock and guys like that. Uh, uh, Jack Kerouac, uh, Allen Ginsberg, you know, uh, but the, the fact that they had 1900s dress is reminiscent of the cars that were 1920s type cars. Yeah. Yeah. There's just something is about, about that, you know. Okay. Now, uh, this gets so um, mysterious here. They are all witches. Okay. They're all witches. Okay. Now, what is a witch, really? A witch is a um, person. He, actually, a witch is a shaman. Okay. A witch is a shamanic person. This is a person who is... Uh, you you know is is using the power like a a uh, in a Native American shaman might use or let's say like this a uh, uh, voodoo you know uh, you've got a voodoo doll and you put uh, pins in it of someone you don't like um, you know and uh, uh, you know try to put a curse on someone but also the witches. Um, you know, can call up white magic, invoke, in this case, they invoked um, water to pour from the ceiling. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And uh, um, now that was the part right after that. Can you just repeat that again? You have to find something out before, but uh, after the water comes down from the, the roof that was invoked by them, um, I got a little lost. So could you okay. go that again? Well, again, I didn't know what I, why I was there because, you know, it was a bit of a shock to me. But then I was part of the initiation, which water fell from the ceiling. And again, it was like, I don't know why I'm there. I am not a witch. However, they assume that I am. and the, the girl says to me about how um, gifts have been revealed, but I said, I don't know mine. And one of the witches says, well, you best find out before he comes. 
Okay, now can you say what did, what did the first one say again? The first about our, our our gifts being so the I I was with another woman in the circle when the water come down from the ceiling, and she, she said something about gifts or what? Yeah, and she said our gifts are going to be revealed. And I said, Our gifts like, are going to be revealed. Yeah. And yeah. I said, I don't know mine. And, and you don't know mine. And that's when someone said, well, you best find out before he comes. Now, who is he? I have no idea. Okay. All right. Great. It's good, <laughs> though. This is, this is a wonderful dream. I mean, uh, let's just keep going through it. So um, then after that... Yeah. Um, uh, let's see, uh, what, what happened right after that? Just, can you go through that again? Yeah, of course. We're yeah. sitting at a table and we're having tea. Mm -hmm. We, we all are sitting at different tables having tea. And then somebody says something that makes me kind of angry and I answer her back. And then she says, I don't want to get into this and or hear this. I don't want to hear or see this, sorry. And it was like, because I didn't know what the, the power was, it was almost like whatever she said triggered something in me, which was a memory. Yeah, and memory. then in the memory, I saw a load of people turn grey and then into oh, stone, and they had black eyes. And when they were really solid and solidified and couldn't move, then they just wept sort of tears of gold. And that's when I woke up from the dream. Okay, now let me just summarize this one more time. Okay, it, it's now there are three parts to this dream. Okay, there is the part in the caravan, the manifesting coach. Did you find anything, Gary, about that? Yeah, uh, take undo your thing. Yeah, I did find something. You know, to make clear or obvious, I don't think that's the meaning that we're seeing here. I think manifest in this case, and, and we'll see what Cap thinks, is to become like. I think would be a more likely definition. Would you uh, say so, Cap? Um. I suppose it depends on what you want, but I suppose if you have an idea of what the kind of person you would be, that want to be, then I can see what you're saying is correct. Because most people get in into it because there's something that they haven't got, that they want. And then for some people, it's physical things. Some people, it's different qualities about their personality or um and some people go into it deeper sort of still yeah it's the law of attraction uh you know something uh and it really is something that is uh, uh designed and tailored uh see uh, if you're a beginner and want to understand the essential basics behind manifesting explore this powerful universal law that can transform every area of your life you've been using the law of attraction for a while feel a little stuck you are uh, it's magic making want to further your journey with an even deeper dive into the law of attraction so it has something to do with the law of attraction and uh, what is that now uh, let's see because uh, we're learning something here do you know anything about it, Azine? Yes, I want to say something here. Yeah. So the law of attraction is a misunderstanding of um, um, what happens with the self. So they believe uh, that we can create things, manifest things, and attract things to our lives by the power of mind. While Jung believes that it is the self that can create. 
and it, there is a very different um, result. Um, because imagine that there are, there's this um, course or something that they are teaching you how to manifest the perfect partner. And they did have this um, courses, like how to manifest your dream house, car, and whatever. And what is what they do is that imagine and make this uh, vision board, and uh, just imagine one hundred people sitting there, and they are all imagining the perfect partner. How many of these people need the par perfect partner? Maybe not even one. What self does, self creates a partnership that you may be suffering in that partnership. This person may humiliate you or abuse you. And after a while, by being in that relationship, you learn how to value yourself. It, you learn a lesson through that event that self has created yeah it's it seems to be a mixture of a mystical aspect with a practical can be practical and and they they do mention alfred adler in there and uh his 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 I notion of about adler. well living as if you live as if whatever it is you want is here already you know, and uh, I don't know. But anyways, what happens is that um, all these people with this vision boards, what they are yeah. doing is there's a difference between magician as an archetype. I teach this course. That's the last archetype of uh, personal growth. In magician as an archetype in Jungian concept, uh, you are the philosopher's stone. Yes. So what happens is that you change, you transform, you purify, and you become this philosopher's stone that whatever it teaches, it, it uh, touches, it turns into gold. But you have to go through this inner process, inner journey, and your inner world and your outer world are mirroring as within is without or as above, so below. That's this alchemic um, law. But what they are doing in secret and this kind of positive thinking, spirituality, whatever, it's what um, we call white magic. Yeah, that's what I was White saying. magic has its own shadows. So you force something to manifest and it, it will bring disaster because psychologically your um, uh, psyche is not ready for that. You need a different lesson. You need a different mm -hmm. event or experience. In alchemy, it is called early whitening. And um, Hillman talks about it, that people these days who are doing positive thinking and stuff like that, because we have a process in alchemy. We have to go, go dark, we have to go gray, we have to go yellow, we have to go um, red. And then at the end is purification and whiteness. You just can't say, oh, I'm gonna be positive. I'm gonna create the best thing in my life. and I'm gonna be fine. No, self doesn't uh, uh, listen to that. Yeah, and it doesn't, it, it really, where, where's the development in there? Yeah. I mean, it has something to do. It's very manipulative. It's yeah. uh, white magic and it's creating disaster psychologically. It's creating fake people. Yeah. So I'm one well, of the people since the last 20 years I've been fighting with this. Well, because yeah, because I, it, 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 here, here's dangerous. the thing. You, you're trying to rearrange the deck chairs on the Titanic in a magical way. It's very you know? different from what yeah. we call magician in yeah. Jungian and alchemy, and Jungian psychology and alchemy. You have, yeah. there's no shortcut. Well, well, let's say you, you had the power of the psyche, but you're using it in the outer world. To, you're pushing uh, it to a certain yes. direction. 
Yeah. And it will create a, um, a response. Yeah. Reaction the aim- in nature because you are not there. Yeah. The aims are ego related. See, uh, even though you're using. Mind, mind is thinking and its visualization is not imaginal. Yeah. Imaginal comes from the depth of unconscious. Right. But visualization is something that you create with your mind as a function of ego. Right. So any of the ego aims, the, 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 the ego has all these desires and, and wants, yeah. you know, and it's trying to fulfill them with magic from the depths, you know, either uh, the vision boards, they say, you know, you use them in business, you just put it up there and, and it sort of, you know, is, uh, um, you, you know, work subconsciously on you or something and makes you more like as if what's on the vision board is, uh, and, and then you become more like that. But the, 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 like you say, the shadow in it, it is serving ego. Yeah. It's not I think, serving I think, wholeness. I think mind and visualization has power. Yeah. It can direct the energy that is coming. The libido, it can direct libido and it can create some events temporary. But self is extremely powerful. It doesn't care about what your ego wants. What oh, is it it? Self, self wants what self wants is balance and growth. Yeah, it's more of a Taoist aim. It's not about, oh, yeah. I'm here to give you the, your perfect partner. That's not how growth works. Well, and this is uh, one thing that Aniela Yaffe said too, that, that you don't ever develop or grow through joy or success? I believe you can. I believe you can, but not at the beginning. No. At the beginning of this journey, we have to be pushed. We have to fall from the heaven times and times and times. But there will be a time, there will be times that we can have pleasure, we can be happy and learn something. But in general, suffering is the mother. Yeah, is the motivator and here's the other thing it is um it is 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 making you more mature because you're not so infantile with ego desires yeah you know like a baby i want this i want that i want this well, um, what the suffering does is it tells you what ego wants is not uh what we suffer your life we suffer, wants we suffer because we resist yeah that's the reason we suffer. If you learn to work with the self, we may not, it might not be the perfect life. It, may, it might not be the perfect house or partner or job, but we are open to the change, to the lessons. Um, yeah, you, you're at least running the Zoom. Let's, let's just hear, this is a very interesting concept. Let's hear uh, Roy, Roy and, and Gary and, uh, Kat and Charles, if you can, let's. Uh, you, do you understand what what they're talking about a little bit on this manifesting? It's sort of it's sort of a magical white magic, trying to use some kind of a power of the psyche to accomplish ego aims, you know, rather than I mean. So the who's the who's being served here? Ego, ego, ego. Do you have any comments, Roy? Okay. Uh, uh, I want to ask Kat a question. Mm-hmm. Whose little girl is this? It's the manifesting coach's little girl. Okay, got you. But she doesn't really have a real girl. That's no. mysterious. But this this little girl likes Kat. Mm-hmm. Okay, what I'm getting from this dream is an ethical or moral uh, dilemma here. Uh, Cat doesn't buy all this stuff. Uh, this will ring a bell for Craig. This is theurgy. This is theurgy. You, you're familiar with that term, Craig? I've heard it, yeah. This is theurgy, and uh, it's, it's pretty controversial stuff. And uh, I, I think the little girl's looking for protection. She's the personal spirit. She doesn't want these people uh, guiding her life. And uh, 
Cat might have had some sort of past connection with this. And uh, they're trying to initiate her into this thing to get her to buy it, but she's not buying it. And she gets angry and she has flashback. And I think this dream is something might have triggered this in the contents of her recent life. I don't know, but it looks like a moral dilemma to me. Yeah, well, that what well, you said there is very interesting about the uh, that that this this growing thing keeps going to cat. Uh, it, it, OK, it's like here, here's the growing thing of the manifesting coach. But this growing thing in the dream, it wants to be with cat, not with this sort of a fake fakery type aspect you know and uh uh and then at the end where she says um uh i really don't mind if the if the if the growing thing in the psyche is with you this is so i think this is the shadow she says but don't try to uh use white magic on me Something. I mean, in other words, she's saying that this maybe if you uh, if you and the what and the daughter become very very close, and she's the daughter of me, and she has my power, you know, uh, you'll have the power that I have, but don't use it on me, you know. I mean, I think that. What do you think about that, Kat? I think there's some truth in that, and I have heard. Um, it's kind of like, well, I mean, I when I worked with it, I took it as something else, which um, is that there is this thing I had or whatever in the fact you have these teachers or coaches or whatever, and it's kind of like... Um, If you do whatever, it's fine, but there's always this but at the end, whether it's um, it's like not necessarily be like them, but it's kind of like um, like they're saying or whatever. You can have what you want, but and the, I, what I deduce from it, it was that there was a thing in me that had to be nice in the situation. Oh no, of course, of course. It's not that I particularly wanted the woman in the um, dream or even wanted to be like her, but it was kind of like, for me, there is this thing of being nice and not getting what I want, but being nice, making the situation nice. Oh no, of course, of course I won't. Oh no, no, no. There's what do you a thing think of, of the three-year-old? girl sorry what, what did you think of the three-year-old girl it's kind of like well I, I didn't really think much of her they not been nasty it was like like this little being coming oh you know go sort of back with your mum and everything else why do you keep following me type of thing I was intrigued but um yeah there's there's many things to the, just oh. that bit the, the fact that she just, no matter what, she keeps coming back to you. She's saying, this is where I belong. This is where I belong. You know, I, I think there's a, a yeah, key word here. Yeah, good. And that is, you know, I was intrigued. So this growing, this growing aspect keeps coming back to you. And it's, it's, I don't think this is a moral dilemma. I think this is more of a you know, it's like there's this interest in something, but but the mature form of it is this other woman. And, and, and you know, and so it's like you don't really recognize that the, the three-year-old who is not of you and, you know, would, would eventually be more of a, you know, manifestation of the growing woman. You know, this is not someone that really aligns so even though you're intrigued by this growing aspect it doesn't really align with you and that's why you keep returning it so 
And then we have that statement, don't try to manifest me. So. That's great, Gary. That's, you know, that's, um, it's, it's actually a helpful warning. It's like, you know, I am not the path. You know, it, it's not, it's not a threat. You know, no, it doesn't feel like it either. Yeah, yeah. It's like, you know, this is it's not the way for you is how I read it. Mm. And then, you know, and then you flip over to the, you know, going back to an earlier time. Well, you know, you might think of that earlier time as this is almost, you know, this, that's something that's coming up from your earlier history. And, and, you know, and there's like, maybe there's a draw to something back there. And something, you know, which kind of wants to initiate you back into, you know, at some aspect of your earlier life, you know, it wants to initiate you. And then, you know, but you don't quite recognize it. But then, you know, when someone points out, you know, some shadow aspect, you know, the, the other more negative shadow comes up in you and you remember, you know, how it changed, you know, you're relating to, to kind of a poisonous type of uh, affect where, you know, it, it sort of turned people to stone and, and, you know, where the relating was, was not correct. And so, you know, the golden tears was sort of the recognition that the relating was not healthy. Really good. Let, 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 can I, I want to just quick and then hear uh, what everybody has to say, but I just want to get to the good part, you know, because it's that first part is very, and Azine, you were very helpful in that part. But the, the second part is they moved to the, to the shop with the magicians and our gifts are going to be revealed. I don't know what mine is. Witches. And then some, go ahead. Witches, not magicians. Yeah, okay, witches, witches. yes. They, they are really um, shaman. Uh, a witch is a shaman, you know? I mean, now they, they tend not, now, now I think that the difference between a shaman and a witch can be that they are practicing either black or white magic, where a shaman is a healer, you know, but uh, they still are are kind of linked uh, they with the shamans, you know. But they are witches, and uh, they and one of them says to her, "Our gifts are about to be revealed," and then she says, "I don't know mine," and then someone else says, "Well, you better find out what it is before." He comes. Now, he could be the devil or some, uh, the great witch. You know, some, some, it sounds like it's the great witch. Okay, then, then I want to just uh, quickly get to the good part. I just want to say something about it. I don't know what I'm going to say. But then, then she goes to a tea party. She has this little uh, tet a tet with somebody who says something that uh, uh, is, is a little annoying. And it triggers this memory. Now, this is, if, if it is a memory, it's a memory of a dream. But now you look at people. Now, is it because you're looking at them? Or are you just looking at them while it happens? That they turn to stone with black eyes that, that cry a golden tears. Why did they turn to stone? I have no idea. Okay. So, so it wasn't because you were looking at them. You I just think it saw it. was, but I don't know why it happened. Okay, that was the right. Thing. Okay, so now we look at a person and they become an object to us. So that so, somehow, uh, what I would say is this, uh, 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 Kat, and, and I'm just totally guessing out of the, the blue air, and is that there is an object i mean the idea is that we're we have a some problem with the feeling function some problem with relating uh there's been some wounding 
in our feeling function and the, there possibly a wounding in our relating to another person. So what should be human warmth, uh, we, now it could be one, it could, could be a two-way street here. But anyway, that the persons we are meeting, um, they, they're not full of human warmth. They are um, stone-like, you know? But now there is an aspect of the heart there that they don't want to be stone or you don't want them to be stone because their eyes cry tears of gold. Now, the tears of gold are the, are the tears of um, individuation, of the, of, the, of the treasure hard to attain. You know, this is, this is uh, you know, Young said that everybody, the, the only thing he can tell people is they do have a soul and there is a treasure buried in the field waiting for them. Those are the two things everyone should know. I, they don't have to listen to anything else I say. But you do have a soul. And there is a treasure buried in the field waiting for you in this life. Find it. You know. Now, the idea is the tears of gold seem to be related to that treasure and also seem to be related to that the um, wounding of the feeling function is um, a matter of great sorrow, you know. Um, so wh why don't we go uh, around the room again uh, based on all three parts uh, and just uh, see, and then we want, then let's hear what Kat has to say. Roy, what, what do you, uh, how can you uh, wrap uh, this in to some kind of order? Oh, I, I thought it was a, ethic morality uh dilemma uh cat doesn't relate to that i guess but that's how i see it okay all right it is uh there is aspects there uh that are so uh moving pivotal you know this child that um where does the child belong the child wants to be with uh us but but we don't really see we're intrigued by them but we don't feel a deep connection with them so that we just bring them back. Yet they keep coming, seemingly wanting a deep relationship with us. Second, we don't know what our gifts are, but we better find out. You know, there's an initiation here. And so that, that first part is this, this growing thing comes to us and we don't really, uh, we're intrigued by it, but we're not moved by it. And uh, uh, this other mysterious person says, oh, I really don't mind if she stays with you. But don't use her power against me. But then we don't really have a relatedness. Secondly, we don't know our gifts. And thirdly, um, that there's this aspect of the, instead of encountering human warmth when we look at people, we encounter kind of a stony type of, of relatedness but there is hope because of the tears of gold what, what do you think Azine? I think um, as much as I know Kat um, she has this connection with herself um, so she doesn't get impressed or moved by anybody who says something he has this she has this Resilience. No, it's not resilience. It's just being self-aware yeah. and just not um, taking everything as people say. So I think the child is a representative of that, of that. The child knows that there's something wrong in this process. Uh, she comes, she comes and goes back and forth as a as a witness. And I think a part of this woman also knows that uh, the child uh, in her knows that um, there's something wrong in this process. I think the stoning of those witches is a warning. And um, I think the golden tears represent the magic that you can manifest stuff, but it, will, it may bring disaster. It doesn't necessarily bring happiness. 
if you use this power to manifest things, even if you can't do that. And I think a part of Kat, I think, is aware of it. That's why she's angry. Or she doesn't have the things that is ready, that should be ready for this authority guy that is coming to check things. That's how I see it. I don't know. Yeah, well, that's very interesting, too, is that you're implying that the stony people, the pro, if you, the idea of, of, of becoming whole is, is to become, uh, is to become completely ineffable and mysterious because we've aligned with this, um, uh, you, you know, the dream maker. You know, Stoning is not a good thing. It means stockness. Usually, yeah. uh, usually it's the reverse. What has been stoned, it becomes alive. It gets enlivened because of the flow of life, libido and stuff. But this but is, this I say this is a warning because the stockness is something that cannot move and can is stuck there. So I think it's the wrong process of um, Wrong at attitude in um, going through the process of alchemy. There are all kinds of fairy tales where people are turned to stone. And, yeah, and yeah. it's because there is a curse or something that needs to be uh, lifted. There's so some. Turning back, turning back, looking at the past and see where you have been stoned, when you have been stuck. Stony or stoned. Yeah. And, and the somehow there is an now now here you know what the enchantment is typically in a fairy tale the, the reason that there's no life in the castle and that there's uh, uh you know the, what was wrong with the grail castle you know it was um it was the lack of compa human compassion you know uh, uh, or something it was just very mysterious that the um, what ails you, uh, uncle? It's you know, a complex. I mean. It's a complex because com what complex does is that it creates a knot in the flow of energy. It doesn't let the energy flow naturally and healthy. So there's a stockness. So uh, are you saying S T A R K? Uh, S T U C K. Oh, stuck. Stuck. You're stuck. Yes, that is what I was going to say. It's a very it's important subject in therapy because um, we go to therapy when we are stuck. Yeah, and, and, and yeah, and that's what I usually think of as the as the enchantment. The enchantment is that we think reality is our ego consciousness, that that's where all reality resides. It's it's, but it's two dimensional. You know, it's just, it's flat, you know, and, and they're really, if you stay there long enough, uh, you know, uh, like one set guy says, says, uh, you know, that everything that he could, could happen, had to happen, you know, I mean, and, and nothing more could happen. I mean, and they lose their zest for life. Now, if so you're talking about the kind of fantasy that um, paralyzes you. Mm -hmm. Right or um, you you get stuck in that fantasy. You believe that it's uh, alive, but it's not. Yeah. Right? The, the ego is not really uh, the living part of us. You know, it, it's sort of the witness and the observer. Ego, some people believe that ego is a complex. Yeah, ego is a complex. You know, I mean that's why I say yesterday bears don't have this problem. You know, you know, but yet the ego is a magical thing too. It can't be discounted, but it, it is the witness that the bear doesn't have. And yet it's, it goes off on its own. That's really, I think, what the enchantment is. The, the way to lift the enchantment is through animal helpers, through the psyche, through the instincts, and through nature. That's how you, you heal or cure the enchantment. Those are always the uh, what the fool, the uh, the son the the son who is um, rejected by the king ego, uh, uh, how he lifts the enchantment and really brings the anima back to life to the feminine in the 
in the castle. Uh, you know, marries her or whatever. Uh, Gary, do you have? Go ahead. The ego, the concept of ego in depth psychology is a kind of different. Um, some people make a mistake that ego, the ego and egotism, like ego in depth psychology is a healthy thing. Yeah. You have to have the ego. So ideally the ego, the structure of consciousness is called ego. So it works with the self. That's and, why the woman remained a spider. Because yeah. she, she had but a, anyways, uh, there's different kinds of egos. If you have a very solid, small ego and with this egoistic um, attitude to everything, it's not ideal, it's not good. But ideally in depth psychology, we have an ego, it's permeable. So it's letting unconscious um, elements come to the surface of consciousness. And... Um, yeah, ego basically wants everything not to change. That's how ego functions. It creates stability. It's the sense of I. But uh, ideally, if we work a lot with our unconscious, if we succumb to this um, inner libido and um, wisdom of self. It's the, an in, the, infantile. The ego, yeah, ego, ego is typically... It will start to expand and it gets... Um, a little bit more uh, willing to work with unconscious. Yeah, yeah. So it's it, not it, a bad thing. Ego is healthy in the psychology. But um, it's the way we want our ego to be. It's flexible and big and... Uh, and mature. mature. And, and actually ha have experienced great loss. You know, a, a great loss that it makes it realize that its center is not in itself. It's center, it's not the master in its own house. The center is not here. And we realize that because we we found uh, that we're on a slippery slope, you know, and that we can never uh, find, uh, you know, the standpoint. G Gary, do you, uh, what, what do you think? I mean, this is all- uh, Well, I'm, I'm good. You know, I, I also liked what has been added. I guess, uh, you know, I, my main thing would be to ask Kat if any of this resonates yeah um i i think it does and like you you all have helped me tremendously because i think um there's the, 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 there is a, a tension of opposites for the self-same desire if you see what i mean whereas on the first hand you've got the manifesting coach you can be and have whatever, whatever. And I'm not going to focus on the little girl as yet, but it's provided a atmosphere of community, of kind of indulgence. It's easy, breezy kind of thing, easy living. Whereas the witches, there is discipline. There is actual knowing why you do the things you do or... Um, you know, and um, natural law as such, and how to work with that. And it's like, as Ian says, it is an actual process of development, yeah. Now, the, the, um, the repressed memory of stone, again, there was the thing of, well, I don't know what my power is, and da, 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 there was something repressed. And then being faced with that, um, well, this is what happens when power is out of control. And when, when I saw the, the stone people or whatever, I, I immediately saw like sort of Medusa and things like that and having a sort of um, thing about that. But then again, the thing was repressed. So the, the reactivation of the dream, again, showed me, well, that's how dark it can get, really. And okay. where, whereas the manifesting with the coach, and it's all wonderful, um, there isn't that aspect of it because it's everything's so wonderful and perfect and you can just wish it away. You can just, you know, talk it out of your head. You wish it away, but there is an actual process that to it all 
and it's a, an alchemy to it or whether you believe it or not because as you say if you're over positive and you know you don't acknowledge the shadow in any way it just comes out in other forms so in in a lot of ways the which part is the in a lot of ways the truer path because it is a process of an alchemical process within yourself and you can make informed choices from that place but just recognize we have light and shadow um, within us and it's not so much um siding with one more than the other that causes the harm is that it is actually our choices when you're ignorant of that shadow and the damage it can do like with the manifesting community you know a lot of harm is being done as i said to you craig about just taking you know just manifesting people just for the sake of it because you can if you don't have any personal ethics or moral code that you would be happy to live by then it sort of goes haywire but no thank you so much for that because you've really you know that's kind of uh, yeah like that you would be using someone you know uh by uh by that you're not really in love with them but you just want to show your power or something like that but but i will i want to just say myself uh, i don't know if anybody has any other views uh, i've got one but I, I i'm just saying there's might be something wrong with me but I see these three dreams, uh, three parts of the dreams as just infinite and bottomless. <laughs> I mean, there, uh, this, this first part of the dream of the mystery of the girl that keeps coming and she just keeps coming and coming. Why? We just keep sending her back and we don't seem to have a, uh, 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 we, we don't seem to do anything that she should uh, she should be keeping coming back, but uh, but she's sort of uh, the only thing she does is she establishes a relationship between. She's like Hermes. She just keeps going back between us and the manifesting coach, and sort of establishing a relationship with her. But she's definitely not God. She's definitely not the center of the self. She's sort of a. Uh, um, a mystical uh, white magician of the ego, you know. I mean, uh, let's let's make the ego very very powerful, you know, and uh, uh, and and then Cat sitting here just in her kind of uh, you know uh, very a genuine self uh, doesn't see is intrigued by it but not really. But I'm, anyway, the the mystery of that is this daughter that keeps coming over, coming over. And then this, the second part of the initiations, the unconscious comes down from the self, but it doesn't come down through um, the beneficence and, and as a gift from the center, from the self. It comes by invoking it, by ego saying, psyche come, you know, we're going to initiate ourselves. Uh, we don't need the self here. And so we just initiate. We, we baptize ourselves by invoking with, with ego magic that the psyche comes down from the ceiling. And then we are gifts, our gifts, not we are, we say they come out of us. Our gifts are going to be revealed. You know, not the gifts um, that I, like if we're an artist and we know what art is, we know that we didn't create the art. We're a conduit for it to come into the world. But what they're saying, our gifts are going to be revealed. You know, so it's it's again, it's it's focusing on the the magic uh, of the all powerful ego who's using psyche, but for its own purposes. You know, and it's not like the artist who says that I didn't create that. I'm only the the, um, the the portal through which that came, you know. That came from not me. Came from somewhere else, you know. 
where there seems to be a different attitude here. And then uh, Kat says that she doesn't know what her gift is. I don't know. Um, you know, uh, we have gifts. I mean, usually our gifts are that we are, um, we, we have some kind of affinity that allows something to happen in our lives to us more often than it would to someone else. You know, if there is such a gift, you know. Uh, and then, okay, that's the second part is that um, our gifts, it's not uh, that we are this um, conduit for the, for, from the, uh, uh, you, you know, what the ego, uh, what Jung said about the self is it has, it, that, that all of history has been the story of a progressive incarnation of a deity in time and space. So we are to be the empty vessel for that deity. Not the full vessel full of ourselves, but we're to be empty and fill it with uh, that uh, substance that came from somewhere else. You know, we'll be full of that, you know. And then the third aspect of the mysterious aspect, and you can say anything you want about stony people or stony relationships, but the, there is a, a redeeming thing there, a, a absolutely, completely redeemed. Now, the one, the, the one thing that would be redeeming would be that, the, the uh, well, first of all, they turn to stone. So that's, that's sort of this um, uh, just wonderful uh, phenomenon is that the people are stoned. Now, if they were stoned and didn't have golden tears, uh, yeah, I think of the people of Medusa or something like that. And, uh, you know, that she looks at and turns to stone. And uh, you, you know why Medusa turns people to stone? Is because um, they look at her with lust and not uh, at the, the, the magic of the feminine. There's an aspect there of that she's, um, uh, you know, like when Artemis turns, uh, Who's who's an Acteon into uh, when she's when he sees her um, uh, bathing in the nude uh, and looks on her with lust, then she splashes water on him and turns him into a stag, and he's eaten by his own hounds. You know, and, and the idea there is that that. Uh, that sure, the feminine is very attractive. That life is very attractive, but you don't look on life, you don't look on the feminine for uh, for your internal gain, your internal uh, profit. So a person who sees a beautiful woman or sees life and says, "Oh." I could get several moments of pleasure from that, you know. I mean, uh, you know, and and is not seeing that that uh, the the symbol symbol behind that um, attractiveness and beauty that draws us towards it. And by the way, that woman that we see is not what is happening. What's happening is inside us. She's awakening the beauty of life and the beauty of union with nature within us. And she's the symbol of it. But no, we see carnal pleasure, you know. And so then uh, the goddess says, she's not Marilyn Monroe. This is the goddess. And she just splashes. She's, that's not what she's there for either. And she says, you, you're just an animal. You don't want to be transformed. You you are uh, acting. You are reacting to me as an animal. So be an animal and be eaten by your own hounds. So so this is some of uh, I think the aspect of the Medusa stone. But the redeeming thing is, and and it's completely redeeming to me. I mean, it doesn't really tell us uh, how it all uh, ends up, but. What do you think, a cat, of the gold tears of gold? 
Well, in the dream, I was surprised, but I, I wondered if it was a bit, again, like the um, turning the, the base metal into gold type of thing. So, again, it's that Transformational. Aspect, yeah, it, that aspect, that gold has to be in the base metal for it to be transformed into gold anyway. Um it's not that you're adding something to the base metal. The base metal already contains the gold. But that's what I did kind of think of when I um, was sort of looking at the dream is the fact that, yes, they're stone and I've turned them into stone and they, there's tears of gold. But perhaps in some ways I had been looking at it wrong you know in you know in the dream I had repressed the memory and it popped up but now it's popped up now perhaps I might be able to see it in a different way rather yeah. than it being a, a, a memory of repression and revulsion and uh fragmentation perhaps and pushing it away perhaps I can look at it in new ways and get something um, different from that, a different perspective, rather than uh, pushing it away, embracing I, I, it. Yes, I mean it is. There is this transformation. I've been going on. I, I Zine, uh, you're you're saying that you have a vision, and Dawn, did you have a dream? Uh, uh, let me see what uh, Dawn. I want to read what Dawn says. But d d did you have a vision that you wanted to share, Zine? Yes, it's um, very short, but. Um... I'm using it, uh, I'm sharing it as an example of in the importance of association and amplification. I think when we share the raw um, dream, everybody just projects their own psyche into the interpretation, right? I think we have to, before sharing any dream, we have to do our association, preferably amplification if there is some and um, just share it with the dream with others, just to give an idea of what this balloon or this bicycle means in my world and uh, what these golden tears uh, feel to me or uh, whatever, because unless we do that, everybody's projecting their own psyche on that. It, it is, uh, but let me just say this, uh, what I'll say, uh, did you did you have a vision, Azim? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, the only thing I want to say about um, um, there there is an aspect of of a dream that that needs associations from that person. Uh, yes, but I, I mean, I, all I would say is that the, that some of these images, you know, there are some images that are closer to the personal. Some need amplification. Some need yeah. Yeah. yeah, closer to the person, and some are almost archetypal, you know, yeah. and 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 speak uh, like like that, like uh, von Franz says that um, that she w much preferred someone to be stupefied by an image than to have no reaction at all, you know, and I mean to absolutely have no idea what it. Means. And of course, uh, there are parts that only the dreamer can see, yeah. uh, and there are parts that others, specifically a therapist, can see. Yeah. But um, I think we have to do our homework before Definitely. Uh, introducing the dream. Well, part. let's now, Dawn, if you would send me uh, the dream uh, that you had, uh, so we, and we'll start it with it Wednesday. But uh, Azine, maybe you could just. Finish yeah. with your vision. I had this vision uh, two nights ago. Um, I woke up, I wanted to go to the bathroom and I remember that I was just having this vision. It was a cardboard, a cardboard box. Uh, and there were some um, balls in it. And uh, the vision that I had was I was looking into that box and these balls were colorful. And I reached out to them, I touched one of them, and it was, it was basically like an eyeball, uh, alive and warm and soft. 
So uh, I went to the bathroom, I came back and I fell asleep again. Again, I had this vision that I was sleeping in the bed. All these balls were around me and they were keeping me warm. And my head was small and my legs were a little bit apart. So I told myself, come on, this is not, this is not going to have any meaning. This is just pure bullshit. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. like a very weird, weird um, vision. So in the morning, I woke up and I tried to do a quick association. The first thing that I associated with these balls was um, Christmas ornaments. Christmas ornaments, balls. But then the second association was that they were eyes. If I, I remember the vision, there was like a, it, it was like a big eyeball. It was colors around it, but there, it was definitely an eyeball. So the next association that came to my mind was insight. Insight, different insight. insight. Yes, insight. And then I remember that uh, a friend of mine invited me for a week for Christmas. And I was thinking if I should go there or stay here and work on my uh, institute. And um, so the next vision was that these insights, these balls that they were pretty alive and warm and organic, um, they were keeping me warm in the bed. And the next association that I closed my eyes and I imagined myself in the bed with this, uh, with my head and legs apart. And the first thing that, first image that came to my mind was a Christmas tree. So I associated, associated with um, this um, Christmas tree. And what came to my mind was rebirth because a tree yes. in, in pagan, it's always about rebirth and aliveness. So what I got from this vision was that what is keeping me warm and alive in my life is my insights and my work. And comparing these eyesights to Christmas ornaments, they, they were a little bit um, dead, you know? And so, roundedness, roundedness. There's roundedness, something, yeah. Yeah, something yeah. spherical. Holistic, holistic, right. Yes. So it was very interesting that this, this it is like two seconds and two visions, you know. But I got my um, understanding. I did my association. And even that weird vision, just a second of vision, a flash uh, of vision, it, it, it revealed something. It had some meaning to me. So I don't know what you guys are about. Yeah, think about this, but that's what I got from this. Well, let, let me just go through it again. Let me see if I can just summarize it. The, there's a cardboard box. It's full of bones. So balls. these are balls. 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 Okay. It's full like of 40, balls. 50 of them. Those in the yeah. Box. And you reach in and they are alive. And they They're are, eyeballs. Uh, yeah, They're they are eyeballs. eyeballs. So uh, this this is the, yeah this is um, inward sight. I mean, there, there's just this idea of that the, there's there's this treasure chest full of of the ability to look inward. You know, I mean, this is this is sort of a uh, well, you you know, it, it it is like the barrier. Uh, now let let me ask you this: Is it the ability to look inward? Or is it the in? Um, is it the depths watching us? Both. It's Both. insight. The you can two, you can you can read something and connect two thoughts to each other, and they begin insight. So, it, it is a relatedness. So the depths are seeing us, acknowledging us, mm -hmm. and we are looking back at them. So there's this. Uh, so. So, you know, um, it, it, it's a physical. Oh, it's being seen. It's being seen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The physical manifestation of, of that, uh, that, that, that invisible world that is aware of us trying to send us messages every night. Here, we're picking it up and looking at it, you know, and, and it's looking back at us, you know, and it, it is, it's associated with rebirth 
because they're in in an aspect of Christmas tree ornaments. No, uh, I mean they're they 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 are related to the tree of rebirth. You know, and it's interesting because the the other week I was thinking about how we feel about a dream is important. Yeah, but I was also thinking how our sensation related to the dream is also important. And in this vision, I sense my body. It was a sensational feeling that I was the Christmas tree. I felt it in my body, you know? So the sensation is also really important in interpreting dreams. Um, that's, that's how grounding works because grounding takes us there to this tacit knowledge, experiencing the dream in our body. I think that's- it made you warm. It actually was uh, yeah, uh, a something that, that was warming. Does anybody else have any uh, comments about this vision? I find it really fascinating because as you say, as in, it's about being seen. And the last time you shared the vision that you was again, a baby, being held by Robin Williams, and it was just something warming to you about being seen. And again, you brought up the Christmas, um, thing and the Christmas tree, yeah. and again, Christmas trees are evergreen. They keep their leaves all year round. So the- the, the it keeps you alive yeah. and warm, yeah. And, and, and then again, with the, uh, the last time we spoke, one of your your um, visions again, I Robin was very strong for me in the fact of again, this is the time you associate with the Robin Redbreast, and again there was a, a, the the wow. story I said about the Robin burning his chest, bringing the fire <laughs> to people. There is a story about how um, Robin gets his red breast by um, holding fire. So um, for the people of Earth or something like that. So this is really, this is really lovely. I like the way that it sort of flows together. But I like the fact that you got so much out of it as well in your body. And the yeah. groundedness, as you said, with trees. But it's again... You know, tree is also, when I think of tree, I think of not only just organically, but the, the, the world tree, the world tree that has all those different worlds within worlds, within worlds, <laughs> all, all in the world trees, you know, shamanically. Um, we travel uh, up, people use the tree, the lower world, the middle world, and the upper world. So... Yeah, it's amazing. Thank you, Rosie, for sharing. Now, Robin means spring. You know, it means the the birth of life. Now, isn't it either today or tomorrow is the day of the birth of light? I mean, isn't it? The, Mithra's uh, Mithra's birthday is tomorrow night. Yeah, I mean, isn't it? It's the the sh the day where uh, after after today, the the light is born again. You know, yeah. it starts to starts to grow. Yeah, tomorrow so, is the darkest and longest. Um, yeah, when when did you have this vision? Uh, two nights ago. Two nights ago. So you had the vision about the tree of the birth of light, and and um now now remember too. I, I this is just something uh, I I want to hear what Gary and Ray have said, but uh, is uh you know Joseph Campbell says. That you know, there's been life on Earth for 3.5 billion years, including the stromatolites. It's only been the last 600 million years that there's been photo receiving cells. That first two or three billion years almost was blindness, complete blindness. So there's this aspect of vision, of seeing things isn't it this a uh, miracle and being seen and being yeah seen. and being seen yeah uh, well uh we're almost out of time but the uh i, I would say this is uh, roy and gary if you could bring a dream next week or next wednesday if you have one and then but let's start with dawn's dream 
Dawn, if you can send it to me before now and uh, like say six o'clock on the uh, in Maryland, it, it would it would be seven o'clock on Wednesday. You know, if you can send a little earlier, I can start working on it. But I want to just say that it was just absolutely beautiful. But um, any other comments before we go, Roy or Gary or Charles? I don't oh. think you've got Charles on anymore. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, I, you know, I, the thing that I really liked about this one was, you know, how sensual it was. I mean, the feeling aspect and the, you know, the grounding part of it where you could really feel it. And that feeling of warmth and aliveness and that they were eyes and they felt alive. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. I mean, you know, the, the sensuousness of it and the feeling part of it, you know, it's like, the, you know, and the that you were very permeable, you know, I think of all that was just huge. I still don't know why they were big. It may be revealed later, but they could be like small eyeballs, right? But they were mm -hmm. big. Because, probably because they wanted to, it wanted to show the similarity with the Christmas ornament. Well, and a playful aspect as well. Yeah. Yeah, imaginal is playful. Well, um, Roy, have you had any dreams lately? Oh, yeah, I have dreams. Yeah, if you've got a recent one, I, I just enjoy your dreams I, very much. So so why, why don't you see? And Gary, how about you? None. None, okay. <laughs> All right, well, I've been lucky. I've been having some. I, they're... they're, they're uh, Pretty good, but not. You should really share. Good. You should share also. I will. I will share. Um, I've been having a, a lot of fun with them, you know. But if we could, I, I, I don't know if you guys have have seen a dawn dream, you know, you cat or a zine. No, but I, I think. Yeah. I'm eager. Yeah, I, I, they are very good, and I'll tell you something. Everybody, I, cat, your dreams. I, I just was thinking the whole time, all these aha moments in that last dream. Uh, and then I combine it with the dreams that you had previously. It's just amazing. Well, anyway, thank you, everybody. This was uh, an unexpected uh, sort of revelation to me. I don't know about you guys. But... <laughs> so, Will, a, a, anybody that wants to come Wednesday will be here. I, I thought uh, what I'm going to do on Sunday is uh, maybe uh, just one of those. Uh, the, the moon is the fertility god uh, out of... Um, out of uh, the book by uh, uh, by uh, Esther Harding. I'll send it out tonight. But uh, I thought we would, you, you know, that whole book is about the moon, about Ishtar, and about, uh, you, you know, it's just all about the, the cycles of the moon, the moon is fertility, whatever. It'll be fun. I just want to live in unconscious. I want to be the spider woman. <laughs> yes, I know. I mean, there's something about that. Uh, that I kind of, uh, I'm, I'm rooting for. Her. Mm, <laughs> definitely. Okay. Well, thank you, everybody. Uh, thank we'll reconvene we on Wednesday. Uh, very, very enjoyable. Thanks. Thank, everybody. thank, you. thank, thank you. you, Craig. Grateful. Okay. Thank you. Grateful to all of you. Bye-bye. Gary, Gary also. Thank you. Bye-bye.